the parliamentary Chogam inquiry was to assess whether there was value for money and how officials spent the funds. While analysts agree that the Mafabi committee did a fairly good job, it remains to be seen whether those who failed to account for public funds, including senior ministers, will be arrested straight away. The forces that dictated the particular reaction that we saw to the Temangalo scandal are still going to be acting this time around. This is why I'm telling you that people might be punished, but it might be really those who are insignificant. The ray of hope this time around is on the keen donor attention on the Chogam scandals to ensure that taxpayers' money does not go to waste anymore. Definitely the pressure the donors are putting the government under is going to force it to act in some way or another. I don't know if you know that donors have already slashed aid. Dr. Frederick Golova Mutebi of Makerere University's Institute of Social Research blames the same donors for tolerating impunity in Uganda, yet they could have acted tough. They haven't acted when political leaders in the opposition have been beaten up. They haven't acted when demonstrators have been shot in broad daylight. They react very viciously when Bahati presents a bill in parliament to outlaw homosexuality. And you think these people must be insulting our intelligence. Analysts say this kind of abuse could only stop or reduce if Ugandans came up to demand accountability. But at the moment, the civil society seems to be in a deep slumber. There is an argument that the government we have in Uganda is not the government we want. But it's the government that is there because they are capable of keeping themselves in power. The unanswered question remains. Why did organizers do transactions at the last hour in violation of procurement regulations? Yet it was clear four years earlier that Uganda would host the Chogam Summit. Patrick Amara, NTV. There is nothing like emergency when you are given two years' notice.